Hey everyone, this is Matt Prez with Converge, and today we're going to kick off a mini series of videos talking about various ways that we can dimension, constrain, and ultimately drive parametric models. We're going to be focusing on creating a whole pattern across a plate that changes its dimensions. We want to make sure that we understand various ways that we can help control this pattern. So we're going to start by looking at equations and global variables. To get started, we have a brand new file open, and it's in the IPS unit system. We're going to go to Tools and to the Equation Manager. If you haven't seen this before, that's okay. We're going to walk through the entire process of creating global variables as well as equations throughout this series. But first, let's talk about the different views that we have. The Equation view will show us global variables, features, and equations. The next one, the Sketch Equation view, will show us just that, Sketch Equations. The third view that we're going to be using is called the Dimension view. In this one, we'll be able to see those global variables and equations, as well as any feature suppression state and things like dimensions directly in sketches. We also have an ordered view, but we're not going to be using that here. Inside of the dimension view, we want to left click in the area that says add global variable. We're going to start typing box width and notice that it stays red. We're going to hit enter and this goes over to the value equation section. We have various things that we can do here, such as create a function, we're going to look at if else statements later. We can look at file properties. For example, we can make this equal to something like the density or the volume, or we can actually measure something inside of the SOLIDWORKS model environment. In our case, we're going to manually enter a value of 10, and we're going to hit enter twice to go down to the next available global variable section. Now we're going to type in box length. We're going to make this one equal to five, hit enter twice, and then ultimately we're going to have box thickness. We're going to make this equal to one and hit enter twice. So at this point in time, we've created three global variables, box width, length, and thickness, and they're equal to the values 10, five, and one. Now, ultimately these are unitless values. So we could apply box width to an angular dimension for example. So it could be 10 degrees. It could be 10 inches. We're going to say, okay. And now note that we have an equations folder inside of our feature manager design tree. If we expand it, we can see box width, box length, and thickness. We can also right click on this to get back into the equation manager. If you don't see this equations folder, you'll want to right click and you'll want to go to hidden tree items and hide show tree items. By default, the equations will be set to automatic. So they'll only be displayed once you've created global variables. We're going to say OK, and we're going to carry on by creating a sketch and looking at ways that we can use these. I'm going to select the top plane and start a new sketch, create a center point rectangle from the origin out and to the left. Note that in my specific instance of SOLIDWORKS, I have the property set so that I can automatically enter dimensions on the fly while I'm sketching. I'm not going to in this case because I want to show you how we apply dimensions. So I'm going to hit Escape and go to my Smart Dimension tool. I'm going to apply a horizontal dimension, left click, and it opens up the modify dialog box. We're going to press equal on the keyboard, and this will bring up my drop down that contains global variables, functions, and file properties. In here, we're going to set this equal to box width, hit the green check mark, and then say OK. Notice that now we have 10, and we have the equation symbol next to it. I'm going to do the same thing for our vertical dimension by hitting equals and setting it equal to our box length. So now these values are linked to this specific body. We're going to exit the sketch, go to our feature tab, and we're going to extrude this. Inside the dimension dialog box, we're going to hit equals and go to global variable and set this equal to box thickness. So now everything is linked to the values in our equation. If we expand this, and we take a look at these dimensions, you can see that we have the equation symbol next to them. This is also true for the thickness value of our box. I do want to note that sometimes there are features that won't allow you to use the equal sign and automatically link it directly in the feature properties. If that's the case, you'll want to select it on the screen by double clicking. And then you can double click the dimension to open up the modify dialog box and use the equal symbol here. So now we've created a box that is linked to those values. Let's take a look at what it looks like inside of the equation manager. So even though we created these global variables, they're still in place of dimensions in the sketch. 
you can see that we have D1 at sketch 1, D2 at sketch 1, and D1 at boss extrude 1. So these are referencing the sketch as well as the feature that they're applied to. In the value equation, they're set equal to our global variables, and then they evaluate out to those values. Because these are applied to linear dimension types as well as the thickness value, notice that they evaluate to 10 inches, 5 inches, and 1 inch. Whereas up here in our global variable, they are essentially unitless. Let's go ahead and say OK. Let's go back into Sketch 1, and let's select the dimensions and take a look at their properties. Notice on the left-hand side that D1 at Sketch 1 is grayed out. Let's exit the sketch, and let's create a new sketch. For the time being, I'm going to expand and hide the solid body. And I want to start a new sketch on the top plane again. This time I'm going to create a center point rectangle at the origin again, but I want to use my dimension and manually apply a value of 12 inches. And on the left side, I'm going to manually apply a value of 12 inches as well. In this case, I want to take a look at linking values. So the 12 inch dimension that we applied, if we right click on it, we can select link values and give it a name. I'm going to call this box size. Now notice the icon changes and we have a chain link icon next to the dimension. If we right click on the vertical 12 inches and link values, we can use this drop down and we can link it to either box size or one of our predefined global variables. I'm going to select box size and say OK. One difference here is that these linked values with the chain link icon are not predefined in our equation manager. However, if we go back into our equation manager, we can see that they have a chain link icon and they're displayed a little bit differently here. They're grayed out in the global variable range, but they do have box size at sketch 2 and they have their values here. If we try to manipulate their values, you can see that it updates both of them as well as updating the sketch. This is also true for our global variables. If we change this initial size to 12 inches, it automatically updates D1 at sketch 1. We can come back into the sketch. And now what we've done is we've created a sketch with linked values directly inside of our sketch. Now I do want to note that there are differences between the two. The global variables are very easy to predefine. However, the linked values are created on the fly and then linked across the board. When your files start to get very complicated and you start linking to global variables and then deleting dimensions, you start to see errors come up in the equation manager because there is a dimension link to a value that's no longer associated. So you will have to go back and fix some of those erroneous links that happen from time to time. But for the most part, as I start designing things, I will use the global variables and predefine them whenever I know that I'm defining something that has a very specific size. This could be things like draft angle or wall thickness on plastic parts, or they could also be things like just simple extrude distances, like the thickness of a part or the overall size of it. The great thing about predefining global variables inside the equation manager is that information can get saved in a template. For example, if you design cast parts and you have standard draft angles, wall thicknesses, and various fillet radii, then you can put all those inside of global variables you can save a part template file so that anytime you start a new file, those values will automatically be there and be linked. It can save you a lot of time in the setup of files if you recreate similar parts all the time using those same values. As we carry on through our series, we're going to start using these in application. So don't worry too much if you don't completely understand the process just yet, because we'll start to apply it to some parts. But for right now, that's going to end this video on global variables and linking values. Hope you guys learned a few things, and please join us for the next video in this series where we talk about actually applying those to our parts.